This video is sponsored by Pathfinder LED. This is the 2023 Honda Goldwing Tour Automatic DCT. Before you accuse me of clickbait in the video thumbnail, I admit this is actually a 2022 year model. But since Honda made no changes in 2023 other than a slight price increase, this review could be considered a review of the 2023 Goldwing. Hey everybody, welcome to another Cruise Man's Motorcycle Review. Today I'm going to be going into great detail on the 2023 Honda Goldwing Tour Automatic DCT, which as I mentioned in my opening will be based on this 2022 model that Honda was kind enough to send to me for review. I should mention that Honda is not sponsoring this video, no money changed hands, and the bike goes back to Honda once my review is complete. Now this is going to be a pretty long video. So I'm going to include chapter markers in the description of the video. So feel free to skip ahead to whatever part of the video that interests you the most. If you follow this channel, you already know that I own and ride a 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT. And many of the videos on this channel center around the Honda Goldwing. But I'm going to do my best to set my bias off to the side and take a long, hard, critical look at this the latest generation of the Honda Goldwing Tour. I know that some of you are wanting a comparison of this 2023 Goldwing to my 2018 Goldwing, but that's going to have to be in a separate video. If you don't currently own a Goldwing and are in the market for a touring motorcycle, I promise you, you're going to hear things about the 2023 Honda Goldwing in this video that you're not going to find on any other YouTube channel. So I encourage you to watch until the very end where I'm going to rate this motorcycle in eight different categories. You might be surprised at my ratings. The sixth generation Goldwing Tour has a wheelbase of 66.9 inches, weighs in at 845 pounds, and has a seat height of 29.3 inches. The Tour model is equipped with integrated saddlebags and a trunk, while the non-Tour model or bagger version of the Goldwing has all of the same specs except for it only weighs 804 pounds fully fueled. Now you can still get the Tour model equipped with a six-speed manual transmission, but in 2023 the bagger model is only available with the automatic DCT. As for color choices, in 2023, the Tour models are only offered in two colors, black or ardent red. The non-Tour model is only offered in matte gray. The non-Tour DCT model has an MSRP of 25600 The Tour model DC, like the one here, has an MSRP of 29600 You can save $1,000 by opting for that six-speed manual transmission which is still offered on the Tour. The airbag model is only offered with the automatic DCT and retails for $32,900. Honda Goldwing engines have always had a reputation for silky smooth, reliable power. The engine was completely redesigned in 2018 and is now an 1830cc or 1.8 liter liquid-cooled, fuel-injected, horizontally opposed, six-cylinder, single overhead cam engine with four valves per cylinder. And this engine is one of the smoothest running engines you're going to find on two wheels. Also, in spite of being more fuel efficient, this engine feels like it produces a little more power than the previous generation. And it certainly has more growl to the exhaust note. Okay, so let's put it into sport mode. And, uh, Let's do it. Wow. 
I forgot how fast sport mode really is. I have not used sport mode in a long time. And now I know why. I swear, I think the front wheels were going to come off the ground the first time I got on it. Let's try this one more time. Wow. That'll get your attention. Listen, anybody that doesn't think this gold wing can keep up, uh, this is a fast touring bike. You put this thing in sport mode on that DCT transmission and it is definitely got what it takes. It should be noted that the drivetrain of the 2023 Goldwing arrives at the rear wheel via a smooth and reliable drive shaft. Time for the braking test. There's nobody behind me. Very, very good brakes. Very controlled, but not a problem. That braking was accomplished by two 320 millimeter or 12.6 inch rotors up front, each one fitted with a three piston caliper. The front wheel is 18 inch cast aluminum wrapped in a 130 70 Bridgestone Excedra or Dunlop Elite 4 tire. At the back end, you'll find a single 316 millimeter or 12.4 inch rotor with a single three pot caliper. The rear wheel is a 16 inch cast aluminum wrapped in a fat 200 over 55 Bridgestone or Dunlop tire. Now Honda utilizes a linked braking system so that whenever you use the front brake lever or the rear brake pedal, you're actually getting some braking at both ends of the bike. And all 6th generation Goldwings come standard with anti-lock brakes. With a seat height of 29.3 inches, the rider definitely sits on the Goldwing, not in the bike like on some V-twin touring bikes. The seat is covered in a suede-like vinyl that has an elegant look with contrasting trim and even a Goldwing logo stamped into the passenger backrest. Unfortunately, the seat looks better than it feels. For me, the seat is only comfortable for about a two hour ride before my bony ass starts screaming for relief. And like many other sixth generation Goldwing owners, I've had to resort to the aftermarket for a more comfortable seating solution. Of the three touring bikes I've tested recently, the Goldwing has the least comfortable seat. Now I know Honda can build a better seat because I could ride all day on my 2012 Goldwing seat. I would like to point out, however, that there are a lot of owners out there that are perfectly comfortable on the stock seat. The seat and grips are heated and each can be adjusted to any of five heat levels using switches on the console and the chosen levels show up on the dash. Now I'm six foot two inches tall with a 33 inch inseam and 37 inch sleeve length. The handlebar position is perfectly comfortable for me and the leg position is only slightly cramped. Riders with longer legs may have to visit the aftermarket for highway pegs. The electric windscreen offers about five inches of adjustment using a switch on the left hand control. And even at the highest position, I can still see over the windscreen. And it does a decent job of keeping the wind off my chest and face without that annoying helmet buffeting. The sportier, narrow profile of the Goldwing fairing provides very little wind protection for the rider's legs, which is why Honda offers optional wind deflectors. Honda also offers some smaller adjustable wind deflectors that can be mounted under the rear view mirrors to provide wind protection for the rider's hands. Now in hot weather, these can be turned inward to direct more air to the rider's chest. There's also a small air vent located on top of the dash to direct more air to the rider's chest, 
but honestly, I've never found that it has that much impact. The rear view mirrors are large and mounted to the front fairing. They offer an excellent vibration-free view of whatever's going on behind you as you ride. All of the hand controls are within easy reach, even for someone with smaller hands like myself. The marine grade switch gear has a real quality feel to it. And unlike the two most recent motorcycles I've test ridden, the Goldwing's hand controls and console switches are backlit, making them very easy to see in the dark. When it comes to pillion comfort, I can only take the word of my significant other, Ricky, who has ridden behind me on multiple Goldwings and Harleys over the years. If she's uncomfortable, she's going to let me know in a hurry. After seven days of riding more than 2,000 miles, she never once complained about comfort on the 2018. I should point out, however, she's only 5'6 and weighs 110 pounds. Honda did a good job on the lighting package for the 6th generation Goldwings. The two large LED headlights look like they were borrowed from the Acura parts bin, but they are stylish and they do throw a nice amount of light down the road. 2021 and later models get Honda's fog lights as standard equipment, which add even more light, as well as increase the rider's visibility to oncoming traffic. At the rear end of the bike, the saddlebags have LED tail, brake, and turn signal lights, and while they're plenty bright, they're positioned much lower on the motorcycle than the previous generation Goldwings. An integrated brake tail light in the trunk lid would have been a nice addition for Honda to consider to provide more protection from a rear end collision. You know, you can never be too rich, too thin, or have too much lighting on your motorcycle. But sometimes you just have to add these lights yourself. Pathfinder LED is the brand that I've been using on my Goldwing for years, as do my viewers. They offer high performance lighting products for the 2018 and later Goldwing. Even if you ride an older Goldwing, they have great lighting for the 2001 to 2017 F6B models and even the GL1500. Pathfinder LED lights are super bright, and these are the guys that brought the dynamic braking and sequential LED technology to the wing. Pathfinder LED products are easy to install, and they're closely integrated to that OEM styling, so they look like something that came right out of the factory. And I was just told right before making this video that Pathfinder LED will be releasing a new ultra-sleek, multi-function LED spoiler for the 2021 and later model that should be available by the end of the year. I can't wait to see that. Be sure to check out all the Pathfinder LED products using the link below. And I'm also going to put links in the description of the video. Thank you Pathfinder LED for making this video possible. The 2023 Goldwing Infotainment and Technology Package is unchanged since 2018. The dash combines an analog speedometer and tachometer with digital information provided on each side of the dash. In between the speedometer and tach is a beautiful 7-inch TFT color screen that's used to display navigation maps from the built-in satellite navigation system, audio entertainment information, and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto screens. And there's also a menu system to allow the rider to make adjustments to suspension, connect Bluetooth headsets, and a lot more stuff. This is not, however, a touch screen. The rider navigates the menus using a jog dial on the console mounted between the rider and the dash screen. When the motorcycle is in motion, the rider can use a four-way key switch on the left side hand control unit. Two small digital LED screens show the fuel level, tire pressure information, fuel range, odometer, trip meter, ride mode, and some other pertinent information. When it comes to audio entertainment, the rider can choose from AM, FM, Sirius XM, which does require a subscription, MP3 music files from an attached thumb drive or phone, Apple CarPlay music, or Android Auto. AM and FM reception are pretty poor. 
Even powerful AM stations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area come in with a lot of static, and the antenna range is abysmal. Sirius XM reception is much better, and of course, CarPlay, Android Auto, MP3 files play fine. The stereo system can be played through four speakers. Two of these are located in the fairing, and two behind the rider in the trunk. You can also listen to audio through a connected Bluetooth headset, which is what I do. In fact, I rarely, if ever, use the speakers. But they do deliver respectable sound levels. In 2021, the Goldwing got new 55-watt rated speakers. The satellite navigation on the 2023 Goldwing is the same as the one on the 2018 Goldwing, and that's a shame. This system would be fine in a Honda automobile when all you want to do is find the closest gas station or Chinese restaurant. But for a touring motorcycle where riders need the ability to plan multi-day routes and add specific waypoints, this system just isn't up to the task. Actually, you're better off just using Apple or Google Maps in CarPlay than you are with the built-in navigation system. Getting a Bluetooth headset to connect to this 2022 Goldwing is no easier than it is on my 2018. I often have to reboot my Bluetooth headset two or three times to get it to connect. I am guessing that Honda is using an older version of Bluetooth that is not as compatible with some of these new devices. As for the onboard computer, the Goldwing is just way behind other touring bikes, such as the BMW or the Indian. That beautiful color TFT screen should be customizable and should be able to display information like a compass or a voltmeter. Or how about a digital speedometer? As for tech other than infotainment, all 2023 Goldwing Tour models include ABS brakes, which prevents the tires from skidding during hard braking on wet surfaces. However, to my knowledge, there is no lean control for this ABS braking. Honda selectable torque control will limit the amount of torque applied to the rear wheel when the suspension detects rear wheel spin during acceleration only. It does not work during deceleration and will not prevent the rear wheel from skidding due to engine braking. Certainly, there are more sophisticated traction control systems available on other motorcycles in this class. Tour models come with electronic suspension preload, which can be set through the menu system to any of four different settings. Cruise control switches are on the right-hand control unit, but to the surprise of many, the 2023 Goldwing does not yet offer adaptive cruise control. The 2023 Goldwing Tour also comes standard with a reverse and a forward walking mode, making it much easier to move this 845-pound bike around in tight spaces. And, since DCT models go into neutral when the engine is turned off, Honda has included a parking brake. All Goldwings now use a smart key for keyless ignition. The motorcycle can detect when the key is within range, probably about 8 to 10 feet away, and it activates the ignition system so that the motorcycle can be started. Goldwings sold in Canada have the engine start-stop feature, which can be turned on or off through the menu settings. Hill Start Assist is standard equipment, and it works very well. I hope you're enjoying this video so far, and if you are, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button down below and the notification bell. It costs nothing to subscribe, and it's really going to help out my channel. Thank you. The Goldwing Tour models come with integrated saddlebags and a trunk or a top box. And in 2021, the Goldwing Tours trunk was enlarged to 61 liters, which is plenty large enough to hold two large modular helmets. Now, on my 2018, I can only fit one modular helmet, and I have to remove the Bluetooth communicator and lay the helmet on its side, just so I can close the trunk lid. This new larger trunk puts the 2022-2023 Goldwing on par with other touring motorcycles in the storage category. 
Now, the saddlebags, on the other hand, are still pretty small compared to other touring bikes. And the side opening lids can have your stuff falling out of the left saddlebag every time you open that one. But these saddlebags are not removable. However, there is a dash indicator if a saddlebag or trunk lid is left open. It's a nice feature. The trunk and saddlebags are not lined with any soft material. It's just hard, slick plastic. Now, Honda offers carpeting as an accessory, but shouldn't this be included on a $30,000 motorcycle? As for cubby storage, the non-airbag models come with a center pocket that can hold a fair amount of smaller items. Now, this is where Honda intends for you to store your smartphone and connect to the USB port for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or just to keep your phone charged. Honda's solution to keep your phone from overheating in this non-ventilated cubby was to include a cheap piece of foam rubber to hold your phone. I'm guessing the engineers got to the part where the design leader said, how are we going to keep smartphones from overheating? And someone from accounting must have walked by and said, listen, we're already over budget. Just throw in a piece of foam rubber and let's head to the bar. I mean, come on. And don't forget, when you stop for gas, to remove that $1,000 smartphone because the center pocket is not lockable. There's also a side pocket, which is lockable, but can only hold really small items like maybe a Leatherman tool, you know, a pocket knife, flashlight, something like that. The trunk, saddlebags, and side pocket all lock themselves automatically whenever the rider walks away from the bike with the Honda Smart Key. When the Smart Key comes back into range, all of the luggage unlocks automatically. And I've found that this system works very well. If the Smart Key does fail, there is a manual method for opening all of the luggage as well. The dual wishbone front suspension is a real marvel of motorcycle engineering, and the system functions very well, under most conditions. The motorcycle offers respectable handling for an 800-plus pound bike. I found navigating twisty roads and switchbacks like on the tail of the dragon to be a real pleasure. But the suspension is not perfect. So honestly, the engine and the transmission are what really set this motorcycle apart from the competition. As far as the ride and the handling, around town I would say it's comparable. I'd say it's somewhere in between actually. It's somewhere in between the Indian Pursuit and the BMW K1600 GTL. It's not as harsh or as sporty as the BMW but it's not as plush and compliant on surface streets as the Indian Pursuit. The electronic preload leaves a little bit to be desired, and the front shock can bottom out on hard impact with road imperfections. It's almost as if Honda invested heavily on the suspension engineering, but then that accountant came back in and he went cheap on the components. Honda claims to have made some improvements to the front suspension in 2021, but honestly, I can't tell any difference in the ride or handling from my 2018. However, on long stretches of highway, the ride is compliant, smooth, and rock solid. On surface streets, which can be less forgiving, the ride can become a little more harsh. I would define the ride as sporty, not plush. As for vibration, there is none coming through the rider or passenger foot pegs and an almost undetectable amount coming into those hand grips. The engine and drivetrain are just super smooth and the bike handles very well in the wind. As for fuel storage, the sixth generation Goldwing is equipped with a 5.5 gallon fuel tank, which is apparently a big issue for a lot of long distance riders out there. These bikes routinely average better than 40 miles per gallon. So the overall range is typically north of 220 miles before the engine requires more feeding. Fuel range has never been an issue for me, but I kind of like to get off every two or three hours anyway just to stretch my legs. 
So what about build quality? All of the parts on this blue 2022 Goldwing seem to fit together well. You don't see a lot of deviation in the body panels or any gaps here and there. However, I do take issue with the paint quality on this 2022 model that I'm reviewing. I'm pretty damn picky when it comes to paint, fit, and finish. And there are a couple of spots where the paint is dull, almost as if they didn't get a clear coat at the factory. Now, these are very small parts, kind of out of the way, but I noticed it. And this could just be a one-off situation with this motorcycle. And Honda does warranty the paint quality, but you have to file a warranty claim within 30 days of taking delivery. If I had purchased this bike, I'd make Honda replace both rear view mirrors because of that dull paint. Other than a couple of small areas with dull paint, the build quality of the 2022 appears to be very good. Now, there is another issue I have to bring up, and this is not a one-off situation. It's that annoying film or haze that appears on the inside of the clear dash lens. This is a well-known issue, and I can't imagine that Honda has not addressed this after five years. I had this on my 2018 Goldwing, and you have to spend half a day disassembling the front end of the bike to remove that lens to clean it. I know that some owners even had their dash lens replaced under warranty because of this. So you would think by now Honda would have addressed this. And by the way, after I disassembled mine and cleaned it good, the problem has never reappeared. One of the most attractive features of the Honda Goldwing is the low cost of ownership as compared to some other large touring bikes. Those big BMWs are beautiful and powerful, but wait until you get that first bill for maintenance or repairs. And even though the Goldwing is a big, complex motorcycle, most regular maintenance items can be performed by any owner with just a modest set of technical skills and my maintenance videos, of course. And since your Goldwing will run just fine on 87 octane, you're going to be saving money every time you fill up with fuel. I can tell you from experience that owners who maintain and care for their gold wings will enjoy much higher resale values than comparable touring bikes. Lower cost of maintenance, lower fuel costs, and a higher resale value makes the gold wing a good financial decision when choosing a large touring bike. This is the part of the review where I score the motorcycle on a scale of 1 to 5 in 8 different categories. Now, 5 is the best score, and 1 is the worst. Personally, I love the styling of the 6th generation Goldwing. I also really love this two-tone blue, and I'm sad that it's not available on the 2023 models. But I'm giving the styling a 4.5 out of 5. The flat six boxer engine will produce all the power you'll ever need. Put this DCT into sport mode and you can smoke just about any other bike in its class. And no other engine offers this level of smoothness, performance, and reliability. I'm going to rate performance at 4.2 out of 5. Now I'm only going to give the 2023 Goldwing a 4 out of 5 for comfort. The seat is just too hard for more than a couple hours of highway riding, and the stock windshield should probably be a few inches wider in my opinion. This bike handles more like a sport touring bike than a long distance touring bike. It's easy to handle around town and great on twisty roads. 4.5 for handling. Before I tested the BMW K1600 and the Indian Pursuit, I would have probably given the 2023 Goldwing a much higher rating for the tech. But the radio reception is abysmal, the TFT screen is way underutilized, the navigation system is just not well suited to a touring bike, and the Bluetooth connectivity is garbage. But thankfully, the CarPlay integration is nice, so I'm going to give the Goldwing a 3 out of 5. When it comes to maintenance, a rating of 5 will be a bike that's simple to maintain, while a 1 can be a real pain in the ass. And I'm only going to give the Goldwing a 2.5 out of 5. 
That's why thousands of Goldwing owners in more than 25 countries have purchased my maintenance video series. But I am far too professional to use this review to promote my maintenance video, so I'm just not going to do it. With an MSRP of just under $30,000, the 2023 Honda Goldwing is a decent value by comparison to its competition. A competitive retail price and a lower cost of ownership earns the 2023 Goldwing a 4 out of 5 for value. And there is some value to having that large Honda dealer network as well. This final rating reflects how much I personally like the 2022-2023 Goldwing. And I'm giving this 2022 Goldwing a 4.7 out of 5. So if you average all of my other ratings, you probably won't come up with 4.7 because the Honda Goldwing is more than the sum of its parts. This motorcycle is simply a great piece of engineering. Is there room for improvement? Of course there is. It still needs a more comfortable seat, a better radio, updated tech, and improved navigation. But that six-cylinder boxer engine made into the automatic dual-clutch transmission alone keeps this motorcycle at the top of my dream bike list. Of all the touring bikes I've ridden so far, I keep coming back to the 6th generation Goldwing as my personal favorite touring bike. So that's my review of the 2023 Honda Goldwing Tour Automatic DCT, or is it really a 2022? If you have any questions or comments about my time on the Goldwing, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below. And don't forget to watch for my upcoming comparison video of this 2022 Goldwing to my 2018 Honda Goldwing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button because that's going to really help out the channel with YouTube. Thanks again for joining me today. And until next time, remember, no matter what bike you ride, ride often, but always ride safe. See you soon.